Hey there, I'm Randy Zimnock, and in this episode, we're gonna talk about how to get more showings on your properties. So I've seen properties on the market listed by agents, uh, either it's an investor property or a seller's property. Uh, even when they're vacant, I've seen this happen. And when they do this, unfortunately, it could actually deter other agents that are working with buyers from showing that particular house. And that's what I'm gonna cover here. I'm gonna actually tell you how not to deter agents from showing your property, but instead increase that number and have as many people see your house, which would lead to more offers, more leverage, and an amazing sales price. So let's dive into it. So the number one thing that deters agents from showing your property is a showing scheduling service. And if you're wondering what a showing, showing scheduling service is, it's simply a company that handles all showing requests from other agents that wanna show your property. And they do that, listing agents use those services so that way they don't have to receive those phone calls and the text, be in the middle creating that. And let me give you an example of what that experience could be if I am the buyer's agent trying to show your property. And if that listing agent that you're working with, if you're an investor or if you're the listing agent selling that property, here's my experience. I'm gonna call that showing number because there is a specific number the company gives you to use. Uh, I'm calling them and I'm saying, hey, I would love to schedule an appointment. And they're like, oh, well, what is your name? Okay, hold on a second. Can you spell that? Hold, hold on, was that a Z, 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 I? No, Z, M, oh, literally, like, and they will ask me like, because they need to put that into their computer system. And then they're like, what is your license number? So I give them my license number. Like, oh, confirm your email, please. So I give them my email. Then I show up in the Department of Real Estate database search that I am an actual agent. And then they're like, hold on, let me just see what it says here for instructions from the listing agents and the seller. Oh, it's vacant, you can go. I'll send you a confirmation email and a text, is that okay? Or it will say, oh, hold on, I have to call the owner or let me call the listing agent and see if I could skip. This is the experience that I literally have sometimes with the companies, with the agents that use that. At that point, I'm frustrated, I'm annoyed, now I'm losing time, and literally, when agents know that that's what's about to happen, sometimes, I'm not saying all agents do this, but some agents, if they're in a hurry, they'll say, you know what, let me just skip this one, this one property, and let me go show these, because they're easy to show, let's just, it, it's vacant, there is a Century Lock, which is a realtor lockbox in San Diego, and I'm gonna go there instead. We would never know this, no agent will ever tell you this, but I know this happens. And it's because of that just annoying experience of trying to just schedule a showing on your house. So here is a better way. Here is what I do with my team. So for any property I list, including if they're occupied, I would rather have them text me. Who is them? The buyer's agent that want to show a property. I want them to text me their information so I have their name, their license number, and when they want to go and show it. And if I'm telling them, hey, it's vacant, then my instructions on the MLS will say, text your information to my cell phone number and go. Property is vacant. That is very simple for that buyer's agent. Be like, oh, text my info, all right, that's it. And then they could go. They don't even need a confirmation from me because I literally told them just to go after they text me their info. If I, if I need a maybe an, an hour's notice or two hours notice to let my client know if the property is occupied, then they will wait for just the confirmation. But at least I try to make that very short window, hopefully that they need to tell me and make me aware. So that's something you need to talk with your client with. I, the easier it is for us to show your house, the better. So is an hour window okay for you? Because literally, you, you know, buyer's agents are, imagine them driving around with their buyers, around looking at properties, and next thing you know, they might drive by yours and be like, oh, wait a minute, this one was not on our list, let's show this one. And then they look it up, and if they could show it in that moment, they'll show it. But if they have to call a scheduling service company, they're just gonna continue driving, right? So again, let me repeat. 
I just put text me and go if it's vacant. Then I use a realtor lockbox, right? And I know pretty much everywhere in America, they use this. So in San Diego, we use Sentry Lock. That's what it's called. So I will not use a manual combo lockbox. I will use the realtor lockbox because it tracks. So when an agent goes into that property, after they text me that they're going, I will then know when they go because I'll get a notification via email that they entered the property and they emails me when they leave the property. And now that I have their contact info, their actual cell phone number, because they text me, remember? I will then text them back and be like, hey, do you have any feedback for my client? How did the showing go? And I get instant feedback back in most cases, of course, because not every agent responds, but my probability of getting feedback goes up tremendously, right? When I do that, because I have their cell phone number in my phone. And what I found, and this is a little tip, the, the platform that the realtor lockboxes use that emails you that notification when the agent enters the property and leaves, that platform, when the agent sets, sets it up themselves, they sometimes don't actually put in their cell phone number. They use like an office line. And here's a problem. If you never got that text message early on, and you only relied on that email notification from that realtor lockbox, you might be trying to call the office or text the office and it will get bounced back because it's a landline, it's an office line. And now getting feedback is difficult or you'll never get it, right? So that's why it's important to see if you can, they could text you before they go because now you have their cell phone number. And here's an example of what literally happened because I was able to follow up with a few agents right after showing on this one particular property is I followed up right away after they showed it and the agent literally said like, well, my buyer just started their search. They're not even fully pre-approved yet, but I wanted them to see this house. So they might not be ready. So I, I'm, you know, they like it, they're interested, right? But they're not ready yet to submit an offer. There is a very, very high probability that they probably would never email me or call me to tell me that if I proactively didn't send that text message. Because that agent was literally convinced that there is basically it's a waste of his time to even consider doing anything on this property, even though they might like it. Because they he literally was like, Oh, you're probably getting offers. So I, you know, I'm sure this, you know, you're gonna sell this and just fine. But my clients did like it, they're just not ready, they just started. Well, guess what? The offers we were getting never worked out. Guess who I kept in touch with? That agent. I kept in touch with that agent over weeks. Weeks went by. He finally got the client fully pre-approved. I got that information and I got them in, re-interested and motivated that they have an opportunity to actually get that house even though it's been weeks since they saw it. And we actually sold that property to that buyer. Only because, and I truly believe, only because I had the information, I was able to text them right after the showing. And that's how you create a win-win. Analyzing a property before you buy it is obviously very important. However, what I find that most people just do it wrong. And I, I know that that alone, one mistake could cost you ten, tens and thousands of dollars. It could literally cost you your business. And I don't want that to happen to you. So I created a step-by-step -step property analysis guide sheet to walk you through exactly what to look for to make sure your deal that you're looking at is worth buying. To get the property analysis guide sheet, just go to randyzimnock.com.